And we were sitting at our table, big tables, four people, and I peed on myself. Mm. And then my friend saw it, and she looked. She called the teacher over, and she started pointing because it went under the table. I was thinking, I remember my thoughts. I was thinking, oh, I'll just tell them that it rained or the oh roof, hell the roof leaked <laughs> and it went under the table. You had a cool story lined I mean, up, didn't you? You're five. I mean. <laughs> everybody and welcome back to the show after school with the Lawsons. I have my beautiful wife aka my co-host here with me today Miss Whitney Lawson and uh yeah so it's just me and her and her and I and we're here for your entertainment for this morning. That's right. Hopefully you're buckled up you're smiling and you're having yourself a wonderful day because today is Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. But it's not Easter to you. It's Easter to us. Uh, to us. So happy Easter to the fans, the followers, the friends, the family. And this week has been busy. Very busy. Really? Um, I'm exhausted. Me too. I'm mentally exhausted and physically exhausted. But somehow we manage every week Yeah. to pull through. You know? And... Next week, or this upcoming week, is going to be a busy one. It's going to be busy. And the following week is going to be a busy one. Yep. Um, the following week, I don't want to shout any surprises or anything, but we do have a special guest coming up. Uh, i got to travel to Nashville. And just a little hint, it is the music city capital of the world. So uh, that may hint it. But, yeah, i got a little guest coming on the show. Super excited about that. You know, 49 streams on Easter Sunday for After School with Lawson's is pretty cool. And that's just audio, right? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's super cool, especially, you know, a, a holiday and people are taking time out of the holiday to catch up with our family. I think it's cool. Well, they're probably doing that because they're like, oh, my kids hunted many eggs before. Once <laughs> you see one, you see them all, yeah. you know, so. And, um, you know, I don't know if you guys listening do like the whole Easter extravaganza. So like with your family, but I feel like the week build up to Easter, there's like thousands of egg hunts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. At churches, yeah. at schools, everywhere. And I'm like, I can only take so many eggs. So we did our families yesterday. Uh, for like the Lawson family. And then um, we and did, we did um, our baskets yesterday, yeah. but we did an egg hunt with Layton today. today. Yeah, so she got to hunt eggs today. She got Cadence to hunt eggs was yesterday. there as well, but Cadence is like, eh, kind of felt like I'm too old to hunt eggs. And the only yeah. reason she hunted yesterday was because I told her, I said, they bought prizes for the older kids yeah. too. They're not just baby prizes. She said, Oh, okay, I'll hunt then. Yeah, yeah. So she's at that age now to where she's like, I can hunt if I want to, but yeah, I'm not really right. interested. She's still at the age to where she's like, Oh, I'm still going trick or treating. Oh, yeah. So when did you stop egg hunting? Do you remember? I could not tell you. I couldn't either. I, I have no idea. Um, but I know I had like special Easter baskets every year. Um, my grandmother in Chicago had a, they gave us an Easter basket with our name on it. Oh. And we use that all the time. I mean, I Did think. Did you ever have anything like that, like growing up with your family? I think um, up until I was probably 16 or 17, my mom would still get me an Easter basket, a Valentine's basket. I mean, oh, yeah. everything. I mean, I was 23 years old and I was still getting Valentine's Day gifts from my mom right usually it was a pair of boxers and then i transitioned into briefs but she would get me like silky boxers that said Hold like on, briefs love. or boxer briefs uh what's the difference briefs are like tidy whities oh no i don't wear those <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't wear those well let's point out the obvious too my voice is almost gone yeah. Uh, it wasn't like this on the last episode. He took a punch right to the throat. Uh, that's false because, as you guys know, if that would have happened, she'd have had a black eye on this Bears show. Bears eat beats. <laughs> false. But uh, <laughs> that yeah, reminds me of the office. I woke up and uh, just, yeah, you know, I, I can't say that I don't feel bad. I do, like, I get real exhausted really easy, but 
my voice is gone. It feels like someone's kind of, kind of got a little choke on me a little bit. I think uh, the allergies are really bad. I mean, you could tell we just got our car mm-hmm. detailed yesterday. Covered in pollen. And this morning it was covered in pollen. I mean, it's very bad for everybody. Yeah, this time of year is rough. I mean, if you can seasonal allergies, I'm constantly clearing my throat. The drainage you and I have had. I mean, I honestly think that's what it is. Yeah, you can go out there and write "wash me," and it looks like gravel dust. Yeah, like you've been on a gravel road, but it's It's not. It's pollen. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, So I don't know if wherever you guys are listening to in the United States or in the different parts of the world where after school with the Lawsons is streamed, comment on uh, our YouTube video. This one here. Um, if, and if you are listening and you're like YouTube video, I didn't know they had this on a YouTube video. Yeah. You could watch us just search after school with the Lawson's on YouTube and comment where you're from. And like, is the seasonal allergies the same? Is there pollen on everything all over the world this time of year? You know, I've always wondered that. You ever just like, look at someone and they're talking. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying this to be rude, but I was looking at you and like I can totally process what you said, but in that moment I wasn't listening. I'm just sitting there, and it's almost like a mumble in the background. That's that's usual husband wife relation. Usually that's so. What you and it's weird because you're not paying attention. Like you're really not listening, but you really did process what they say. What I say. Uh, comment wherever you live if the pollen's high. Yeah. So what that's called is selective hearing. Men oh. have that as well. So. The, all those times when you're saying, honey, do you hear me? What you just experienced, I have 24-7. So yours, you. isn't, yours isn't selective hearing. It's just you're not listening. No, it's called I choose to hear what I want. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Same thing with driving. You ever do that? And it's like you ever like drive and it's like you're zoned out and you realize you're like, how did I get here? <laughs> like I don't know about that. I do that all the time. Like I'll be zoned out and I'm like. Oh my gosh, how did I get home? I don't even remember driving. Like I went through stop signs and lights and everything. Like I'm shocked. Like, how did I get home? Do you need to go see a physician? I mean, you've never <laughs> done that before? No. Usually if I get behind the wheel, I know where I'm going and I know when That's I get the thing. there. thing. Tell me, trust me. I mean, other people at home have probably done that. You zone out and it's like you're you know what you're doing. You're turning on your signal, you're stopping and stuff, but you literally zone out, you don't remember doing Turn it. Turn on your signal. Like you do everything correctly. Oh, Zeus is trying. Oh to Oh my in gosh, the room. that scared me. I thought it was like a tornado <laughs> or something coming. Um, but there's plenty of people I'm sure that do that. Um, yeah, no, I've I've never. I do that a lot when I, I zone out and I'm like, oh my wow. gosh, how am I home? Speaking of driving, you had a little experience uh, yesterday uh, during oh, your yeah. little commute around town. So what exactly happened again? Um, Leighton and I, I had my two year old in the car. Um, I was pulling out and there was a huge space like there was someone way down the road and you can only go right like come out there's no Mm -hmm. light and so I pulled out and of course I'm not going to speed off but they're way down there but they must have been going 100 miles an hour and so they speed up and get real close to me they're just rear uh, going on their horn yeah And then like come around me, speed around and then weave right in front of me. And then all of a sudden they give me the middle finger out of their window. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I have a two year old number one in the car. Two, that's not safe for anybody, any kind of traffic. And three, did that really get you to your destination any faster? Cause you got one spot ahead of me. Right. And then it's like, okay, maybe this person's having a bad day, whatever. And then I'm sitting at an intersection. They say haste makes waste. Have you ever heard of that? What's haste? Um, like, like hatred. No, haste means like if you're in a hurry. Like if if you're in a hurry, I think. I don't think so. Daniel Science states haste means like you're in a hurry to do something. Well, Whitney Math says negative Ghost Rider. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> um. Anyways, I was sitting at a stop. I'm waiting to get out. Traffic's built up, backed up. And it's bumper to bumper. This young man who's like 19 comes out. Can you put your phone down while I'm talking? I'm looking up haste. No, put your phone down while I'm talking. Haste is an old fashioned second person singular form of the verb have. Now, how many words out of that sentence do you even know? (laughs) Now you need to go and Google each one of those words. I don't, haste, how would you spell haste? The only time I've ever heard her haste is post haste 
What is that? When someone says, we got to get down there post haste, I think. <laughs> You're delusional again. I think I've heard that in a movie. Maybe a kid said it, Dennis the Menace or something. I'm not sure. Huh. All right, continue. I'm going to continue my Google search. Go ahead. And <laughs> anyways, I'm sorry. I'm yawning, guys. It's late. We're exhausted. But I'm sitting there waiting to get out. It's bumper to bumper traffic, and this guy speeds up and tries to go right through these cars to come through. This old man slams on his brakes because this dude nearly hits him, and this guy pulls through. He stops directly in front of that car, flicks this old man off, and then drives off. And I'm like, "Are you kidding me? Like you did for one, you didn't even have the right away, and two, you're the one that almost called a caused an accident." And then I realize in my head, and I'm like, the two people that I've seen do this, or I see it Mm. most common, is among the younger generation. Yeah. Like 19, 20 year olds, because that was the way it was with the woman who flipped me off. It was probably. So it was a a woman and a man, or a a woman and a woman who did it to me. A young guy. And then a young man who did it to the the uh, the, the, the elderly man. And I'm thinking. I don't remember stuff like that growing up. And I'm like, what happened to respecting your elders or just respecting people in general? Like, I have never seen people behave so poorly. Like, what does that get you flicking someone off? Like, going somewhere? Like, I don't understand. Well, I'm going to be honest. I'm all about flipping the bird when do necessary. But with the younger generation, I just feel like it's a little bit of, obviously, it's less respect. I feel you like know, they're entitled, yeah. almost oh, like, yeah, yeah, for oh, sure. uh, I should be in front of you, or oh, you didn't let me out, or whatever, yeah. and it's like... But what makes them feel entitled? Well, I think they're not being raised correctly. That's an issue. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, mean, I agree. Yeah. And then for one, all this social media that they have that we didn't, I mean, it's being fed into their brains, the stuff that they see. I mean, they also don't socialize like we do. Yeah, and let me explain what she's saying when she says the social media that we didn't have. So with you guys that are just on audio and don't visually see who we are uh, or don't know us for who we are, we grew up in the time where we got to witness the world without it. And we went through that transition of getting it, Mm -hmm. and now we see what it's grew to today. Exactly. That's the special part of the generation we grew up in. Mm -hmm. We got to experience going outside and playing, leaving your door unlocked, you know, and enjoying the moment to transition to, hey, there's this cool new thing called the internet. And you can find out all kinds of cool stuff. And believe it or not, if you go to ashjeeves.com in school, you know, you can find out all kinds of cool stuff. But then we even transition years later to, hey, Siri, you know, and now it's going to go off. But that's what she says when she says we grew up in a time without it. We did, but we also went through that period where, hey, here it is, and then boom, today. I mean, kids nowadays will text and be like, hey, you want to come over and play or you want to go outside? Back then, you had to go to that person's house and knock on their door and ask their parents, hey, can Mark come out and play? You know, I mean. Yeah, now they could just text. Or you ride by on your bike and see if their bike's on their front porch. If their bike's not there, oh, they're not home. Or if you see four or five bikes, oh, man, this is where the party's at. I'm going to stop here and play with all my friends, you know. So between me and my best friend's house when I grew up, there was a big alfalfa field. And I had to... What's alfalfa? Alfalfa is just like a type of grass uh, Does plant. it stick up like alfalfa's hair? I mean, it's pretty it's pretty thick, but like we would walk through the alfalfa field. I would trip on the way. And like, honestly, like it was like run and jump because it's big bushels of it, you know? And uh, yeah, you go down there and knock and be like, hey, could such and such come out? And if it was a no, I was pissed. <laughs> One, because I about tripped 14 times on the way down there. Two, I had to walk back. Some of the times I'd walk up the street and come back, but nine times out of ten, I walked through the alfalfa field, yeah. I mean, I remember when I was nine, my mom, we lived like a mile and a mm. half away from school. We, My mom would let me and my brother, whether it be ride bikes, walk, take our little razor scooters that you had to use the foot yeah. not a motorized scooter like you kids have nowadays but the actual foot you're pedaling with she would let us go to school by ourselves now, and then come back the, 
on the army base though yeah but still even yeah. at i mean even in back then though that was in the 90s well right but the army base school was like on base like on me post. i couldn't ride my scooter because i lived out in the sticks right and the school well, was I'm probably 15 minutes away exactly we lived like a mile down yeah. the road from the school so that makes sense but still the 90s you could leave your car yeah. unlocked i mean it's just you leave your door unlocked and nowadays it's like you better than not i mean i don't even think they had like true alarm did, i don't even know if they had alarm systems back then did they or if they did i mean it wasn't up to par uh i'm sure it's not what it is today right it, there wasn't no vivant back then that's right, for sure right you know but also back to the google i figured it out i spelled haste wrong the first time and then i put the saying and i'm like oh that's how you spell haste h-a-s-t-e okay well yeah well i spelt it a different way how did you spell haste? I don't know. I have to push back. Hold on. But haste means excessive speed or urgency of movement or action. So I was so pretty correct. Much means that you're in a hurry. So when so I was correct. So when I said someone when I made in my example it says we need to hurry up and go to the post office or the grocery store. Post haste. I heard that on a show and I knew what it meant. Post haste. Post haste. Post hurry. I don't know what post means. But <laughs> That makes no sense. I don't know. Haste makes waste makes perfect sense. Like, why are you in a hurry? You're going to be wasting gas. That's what that means. Haste makes waste. That's probably the dumbest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. How? It's perfect. It makes perfect sense to Haste us normal makes people. Waste. Hurrying makes waste. Yeah. Hurrying up and passing somebody to okay. get one car ahead. No, I get the hurrying is wasteful, but you said it means hurrying is a waste of gas like that's not what it means yeah it, just think about it to get ahead of one person car you got to speed up i get it it's a lot of gas coming out you know i ain't thinking about the gas i'm thinking about you getting one car length ahead is not doing anything for you it's definitely not and I you're mean, wasting gas it's a double whammy i guess yeah anyways back to your scooter story or was we past that we were past that well anyways guys thanks for tuning in you know, we got about 39 minutes of after school with the Lawsons with you guys today. Have we been we, filming that long already? No, 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 no. Oh. No, I'm just saying, just giving them a heads up. But I wanted to play a little game today. I wanted to do something different than oh, just gosh. talk about like the weekly update and whatnot. Right. You know, I always like to throw curveballs at you. And, uh, and then after this, me and you are going to spend some time together, hang out for a little bit. And uh, tomorrow's and back I'll to the grind. And I'll get a foot rub. If you're good, what do I get? My love. Mm. I'd rather get a foot rub in return. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah. So what I want to do is uh, this is a little questions to ask your partner game. Okay. So out of one to 295, pick okay. a number. And don't ask why. That's just how many questions are on here. 276. Are you kidding me? You're going to make me scroll down that far, 200. <laughs> so you, now you have to entertain. Okay, I'm, I'm there, 276. Okay, 276. What is the worst job you've ever had? Uh, worst job. Do you know what that is, right? A job is something that... There's quite a few. You, you I mean, quite a few. All right, well, what's the worst one? That's what the question is. It's not, hey, how many terrible jobs have you had throughout your life it is what is the worst job whitney lawson now used to be ashley has ever had hmm. well i worked at a daycare facility one did time. you really yeah and i mean the children were cute and they were adorable. how old were you i was i mean i was probably 19 mm. so 1920 um babies were cute the kids were cute super sweet i loved being with the um after school kids because they were older you got to play games and oh, have yeah, fun that, was, that would be fun but the people that worked there they um like we're harping on me all the time like oh, oh god i'm gonna have to google that one too oh my god what gosh. do you mean harping on you like picking on you yeah i feel like everything i did was wrong like oh you can't do this you can't do that i guess because i was very like interactive and friendly yeah. with the kids and but come to find out long story short 
I witnessed several times of them mistreating the kids, mm. whether it be mentally or physically. And that's when I was like, nope, I'm out. I cannot be a part of this. And it actually got to the point to where I saw something so bad. I was like, I thought in my head, I'm like, what if this were my child? Mm -hmm. I would want someone to tell me because they do not deserve this. They don't deserve to be here and experience this. I said, I would want someone to tell me, like, I don't care who you are. So as soon as that child's mom showed up, I walked right out of the door, quit my job. And I told the lady before she even went inside, I told her what happened. I said, you need to get your kid out of here. Mm. And she said, thank you so much for telling me. I would have never known. And she's like, I appreciate you. And she got her daughter and she left. And mm. they called me and they said, well, something like that, you know, we didn't know that was going on, which was BS because um, that was the manager who called me. She was sitting there watching it mm. and allowing it to happen. Um, she's like, next time you just need to come to us and we can handle this together. And I'm like, did they get in trouble about like, the state or anything? I have no idea because I left. Oh. I, I didn't want to be a part of it, but that was probably the worst job I ever had just because of what I saw, yeah. like people mistreating children. And that is why I tell you all the time, you're like, oh, you know, if you ever need a break, put Layton in daycare. <coughs> and that is why to this day, I will never put her in daycare just because of that one traumatizing experience. It ruined it. Yeah. So. Uh, me, I, I haven't had a ton of jobs. I wasn't like a job hopper. I wasn't a job hopper, but of most of these jobs I had before I got married. You How know, many I jobs was, have you had? You've had more jobs than me. Well, yeah, but you also had like a job lined up for you as far as like your mom was like, hey, I got this job for you. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Well, you know hell, what I, mean? I didn't have a choice. She was like, right. Mom was like, you want a, uh, a car or you want to play football in school? And I was like, hey, I want a car. Right. And she was like, well, you better get your butt to work. But see, the thing is, like, I got married super young. So I left my mom and my dad mm. and I went with him and I had to figure out what I wanted to do. Yeah. You know, I didn't have really that guidance. Well, I haven't had a lot of worse, jo like, worse jobs. Now, I will say w one of, like, the hardest jobs at first and then I ended up to really enjoy it was... I worked at a factory one time. Remember Campbell Hospital? Mm -hmm. We built air compressors. And like when it, when you're like first in there, you go on the assembly line. And I, my job was to, th there was like 15 or 20 of us in a line. And as the compressor comes down, it starts off as a tank. And then when it gets to the end, it's stickered up. It's got all the pipes. And yeah, you what, flick what it part on. did you do at that point? In at, at that, I put in the main hose that went from mm. the tank to the motor. Right. So it would pull in air and put it, right. push it into the tank. Well, all the different, you know, size tanks and whatnot. But anyways, they didn't give me the air wrench. So I was using a manual wrench on a fast assembly. I mean, pretty fast. Right. But, you know, I don't want to look stupid, so I'm doing everything. So I had three things. I had the pipe. I had my uh, washer with, like, a fitting. Right. And then I had this, like, glue lube stuff. So when the tank got to me, I put the, you know, the pipe into the opening of the tank and then kind of like manipulated it to go into the motor of the compressor. But I had this like white gooey stuff on it to like seal it. And then I would like take a little wrench and just ratchet it down. Oh my God. And uh, my hands after the first three days hurt so bad. It's nonstop. You know, it's, oh, it's right. a compressor I mean, I've coming in down the before, every, yeah. every second. And you know, Finally, one of the one of my ended up to be a really good friend of mine there. His name was Shannon. I called him Papa because he was older than me. He kind of took me under his wing and he's like, hey. And I don't know if it was like one of those things like, oh, he's the new guy. Let's see if he lasts. Let's give him a wrench. I kept up. Right. I didn't need no air wrench. I figured it out. And they're probably thinking, holy shit, this is kind of crazy. Right. Well, Shannon's like, hey, there's an air wrench you can use. God, that thing made night and day. All I did, put the pipe in and it was done. Oh, man. I mean, in a matter of seconds. And but then, you're thinking, I wish they would have gave me this three days ago. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. And my hands hurt so bad, like, because I was probably using stuff I'd never used before. Right, right. And uh, 
yeah, that was, it, ended up, it ended up to be super cool to where they moved me to a specialty line and I would build these huge 150, 250 gallon air tanks from scratch, sticker them, like take rem- my time. I remember that. And I loved it. I mean, it was super cool. I learned a lot. Uh, I could build an air compressor from the ground up now, you know? And um, yeah, so that that was kind of like the worst job, but I ended up to really, really, right. you know, enjoy it. Um, we still got some time here. So out of one, two, what was it? 295 and go. 76. All right, that's what I'm talking about. <coughs> 76. How do I make you feel loved? Well, you're with me. <laughs> well hell that's easy <laughs> <laughs> what can i say i'm pretty simple oh man yeah right i am so what do i do like the things that i do like well or what have i done in the past that i could do more of to make you feel loved well i mean just like you wrote me a note the other day reminding me like how much you appreciate me and how much you love me. I mean, I really like the small things, mm-hmm. the small gestures. I love that, you know, or even just sitting on the couch with me. Like, I know like you're very busy and you have your work, but when you sit in there, like you come in there to work, it's like, oh, he wants to, you know, he knows that I probably want to spend time with yeah. him. Like, like I know regardless that you still love me, you're married to me, you treat me right. You know, you don't abuse me. You don't cheat on me. You constantly tell me you love me. You know, but the little things like that, you know. What, borderline abuse. I'm just kidding. Um, but the little things like that, women like. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that always reminds me that you love me. Well, cool. Um, what you do that makes me know that you love me is just like the words of affirmation of that right right and i'm a big physical guy like i love to be touched and my hand held what and, man isn't <laughs> <laughs> and like i just love your love that you have to offer i love you rubbing on me or rubbing my back when i go to sleep or just rubbing my hair and right you know i may sit there and act like it gets on my nerves especially if i'm working but deep down I, I truly love that just like if whenever i wake up or something and i come in here in the mornings and mm-hmm. rub on you or give you a hug yeah and stuff. i like that and I'm just a big physical touchy guy. Like I know I need to be on you. And I mean, look at you. Why wouldn't I be? Well, I look You'd be, like a, you would have to be concerning if I wasn't. I look like a bat out of hell right now. I mean, I, I I'm not going to disagree, <laughs> but <laughs> you're still cute. You know, you're, you're beautiful. Um, we still got time. We still got time. Another number. Yep. Thirteen. Hey, my thumb's going to be sore from going to the bottom to the top every all day. Who is your best friend? You. Duh. Yeah. This is my BFF, ride or die, my everything, my world, my better half, my missing puzzle piece. Yeah. See, I would have to say Jordan. <gasps> Jordan, <laughs> I'm coming for you. And Jordan is a guy, by the way. It's not a woman. I know a girl really? named Jordan. No, I mean... To a certain level, you are obviously my best friend as well. Well, you, take note, people. Applications. Come on. I need them. I'm looking for a new best friend. You looks like you're looking for a new husband as well. Hold up them fingers. Okay. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> First who's, of all. Uh, no, 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 no. Who's wearing the wedding ring? Okay. He forgets his in the shower half the time. He's wearing it now. And mine's really nice. So I wear it when we leave the house. And when we're home, I take it off and put it in my little ring dish so it don't get messed up. I don't like to wear it when I'm washing my hands or showering. A ring dish. A ring dish. A ring (laughs) dish. A ring dish. Um, But it's really nice and I don't want to mess it up. No, at the end of the day, you are my ride or die. I can definitely count on you. I'm not going to discredit Jordan. He may be late, but... I can count on him as well. Yeah. You you would be there. At so the you got two hat. best friends. Yeah, I think so, for sure. But who's, uh, who's your number one best friend? Mm, y'all are going to have to draw straws. Maybe okay. guess a number, one to ten. Why don't we just fight it out? We'll you put might, some boxing gloves on Jordan. You might take him. I, I don't, yeah, don't want to put him through that. All right, next number. I don't know. He's been working out, though. So no, Walking or running? He said he's been going to the gym. He ain't weightlifting. He's running. He goes to the gym to run on or, a treadmill? Yeah. I guess that's working out. 
He's a man. He should be going to the gym to lift weights. Uh, he's not quite a man yet. Oh. He's more like a a bum man. A bum man? I'm a man. Just call him a woe man. Half man, half woman. He'd be proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, next number. One. Number one. Number one. Let's see here. Who was the worst teacher you've ever had? My kindergarten teacher, I hope you're watching this. Her name was Miss Ward, but I called her Miss Wart. <laughs> <laughs> I legit thought that was her name oh, until God. she really made me mad one day because she made me piss on myself probably three or four times that school you year. On yourself? Yes, probably wow. three or four times that school year. And my mom constantly had to bring me a change of clothes because she never let me go to the bathroom. I would sit there like this and say, Miss Wart, I have to go pee. Mm. And she'd say, We're in the middle of a spelling test. Go on, keep spelling. And then, so if that, I mean, I remember that exact moment in kindergarten. I remember. So I was like, Oh, can't hold it no more. So, and she would have each kindergartner come up to her and stand at her desk and spell for her while everybody else is working. And I was going to the point where I couldn't hold it no more. So I stopped what I was doing, stopped spelling and lifted up and went like this with my legs and spread. And I just pissed all over myself. I mean. Did she like go to the bathroom after that? No, she still never let me go to the oh, bathroom. Wow. So from then on, every time, you know how all teachers, when you walk in being little, they would say, good morning, yeah, good morning. Yeah. She would say, this is a Kevin Hart moment, because she would say, good morning, good morning, like to everybody. And then she said, every morning she would say, good morning, Whitney. I'd say, good morning, Miss Wart. <laughs> like, just to make her mad. Because she always made me pee on myself. So one time I peed, and I really thought I was going to get in trouble, because this is probably fifth, sixth, seventh, twentieth time, maybe. I don't know. We were in the middle of math and learning like five plus five or something. <sighs> and we were sitting at our table, big tables, four people. And I peed on myself. Mm. And then my friend saw it and she looked, she called the teacher over and she started pointing because it went under the table. I was thinking, I remember my thoughts. I was thinking, oh, I'll just tell them that it rained or the, oh, roof, hell. the, the roof leaked <laughs> and it went under the table. You had a cool story lined I mean, up, didn't you? You're five. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Miss Wart. The faucets in the bathroom are just coming in here. I don't know. Oh, man. Uh, my kindergarten teacher, I loved her to death. I, I I don't have enough time to tell you about the teacher I hated, but uh, my kindergarten teacher, her name was uh, Miss Rudolph. And I still to this day, she was the sweetest woman. Um, extremely nice, super fun. And I've, I've seen her years later after I was graduated. And I, she looked exactly the same. It's so weird how teachers don't age. Like the teachers oh, that I've yeah. had, like Miss Painter that we saw yeah, in right, Walmart. Right. She was my, uh, she was my fifth or fourth grade teacher in elementary school, and I seen her and I was like, Miss Painter. Well, it sounds like your kindergarten teacher was the fairly godmother. Oh, she was so sweet. And mine was the wicked witch of the east. She was a chain smoker. She she'd drop a pack and a half of cigarettes at recess, but uh, yeah, she was a great kindergarten. Or teacher. was it wicked witch of the west? Who? The West Witch was... Uh, wicked? Was bad. So, Mom was the Wicked Witch of the West. East. I don't know. They're probably listening and thinking, they need to re-up on their Wizard of Oz. You get the point. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, those are fun. We'll have to do a couple of those questions um, next time. So, I guess, are you considered my co-host? Yeah. I mean, this is my house too, bro. Yeah, I guess so. And it seems like everybody enjoys your episodes more than... My episode. I mean, what can I say? I'm funny. I mean, I might just take over the show. <laughs> you go right ahead. I mean, I'm going to be the host. I'm going to start calling you my co-host. Y'all, thanks for coming to the show. <laughs> thanks for joining us. We're going to end it. Thanks for having my lovely husband on here with us. You know, let's give him a round of applause. Mm. Until next time, be sure to tune in, subscribe, give us a big old thumbs up. And I for maybe forgot a part. Yep, that's where, you know, expertise coming. Turn play. on that bell icon, is that right? Or uh, no? I don't know if they turn it on. <laughs> but anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Take some notes real quick. Thank you all for tuning in. We appreciate you. I love you. I know she loves you. The family loves you. Again, happy Easter. You can't forget that. Right. It is Easter. And who elected the Easter bunny anyways? Whose idea was that? I don't know. Why didn't they pick the prairie dog? 
Or the possum. Or an Easter flower. The Easter possum. That sounds pretty cool. A possum might as well be, oh, let's go play with Easter raccoon. But anyways, thank you so much. Seriously, uh, thank you for the streams. Be sure and share the episode on Facebook. And maybe next week we'll get my husband back on my show, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, I, I truly do appreciate it. I think it's super cool. We've had, you know, 50 streams on Easter Sunday. That's awesome. You know, continue to share the show. Continue to tell people about it. it it's pretty much an eye view of what you see you were very vulnerable here we're very open and honest and that's what you get here on after school with the Lawson. and we're very funny and we're very funny and if we're not funny to laugh at we're funny to look at speak for yourself speak for yourself there what did you call yourself all ago the walmart shopper no, I did not. I'm not going to tell you what I called myself because I take it back. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time. We love you. I love you. We'll see you later. Peace. I got to pee really bad. <laughs>